Alrighty, guys. Just so ready here. Welcome. It will be another Plat Side 2. Plat Side 2. XCOM 2. <laughs> Pre campaign setup video. Fuck! Uh, as always, one campaign ends, another one must take its place. So, uh, as you can see, this is just the, uh, the video I'm using for the background. But before we get into the next campaign, I wanna. I want to, uh, talk a little bit about the last playthrough. I don't know how much I talked about at the end of Galaxy at War. I don't think I was really in the mood for talking when I finished Galaxy at War, so I think I didn't really say much. But let me tell you, Beta Strike. Beta Strike was a real slap in the face, if you know what I mean. It was... It was definitely unexpected to say the least, right? Because I thought that, oh, you know, everybody has double HP. We're not in one-shot range anymore. We could just, you know, dick around and get away with a lot more stuff. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. I was definitely... Beta Strike definitely made me a little bit too overconfident, more so than I already am. Because you already know that I'm just that kind of guy that likes to activate everything at once and see how she goes. Most of the time it ends up good, but sometimes we have... Those, uh, from squad wipes. But, I mean, you know my rule with squad wipes. If it's a squad wipe, everybody dies. Mission failed, we'll get him next time. Reload the save game. Other than that, I don't do much saves coming anymore. But, uh, still. Beta Strike definitely made me a lot more overconfident than I would normally do. As well as it was, by the late game, I could definitely see why Dur Ava thought that Beta Strike was a bit of a chore in the late game. Because missions take so damn long. But bear in mind, he was also playing a better everything with a better campaign plus, with bigger pod sizes and all the prime enemies and all that stuff. So already you're going to have longer missions anyway with all of that a better admin stuff, right? I was just using, uh, like, an enemy, uh, reskin, pretty much, and no prime enemies, and no better admin, so it was probably a little bit easier for me, right? Missions still went pretty quickly, you know, half hour, hour and a half, that kind of thing. The only missions that really took forever were the Avenger Defense, the final mission, and, uh, what was it? The, like, normal Avenger Defense, uh, Final Mission, and the Chosen, and the chosen uh, Stronghold Assault. So, though, only one of them really took forever. The other two just kind of were there. The Hunter was just fucking bang, bang, you're dead. <laughs> that, that was really surprising, but still. Alright. I uh, definitely lot of, lost a lot more soldiers due to overconfidence than I would normally. Most of the time I lose soldiers to either squad wipes or activating the entire map at once and getting really salty afterwards, but I put myself in those situations, so it's like, whatever. But yeah, beta strike, mm, I'm not sure if I'd really play it again, right? Maybe with a different setup of enemies, like... Let's be honest, the uh, Advent to Empire mod really nerfs a lot of the enemies, right? And if I would play with the vanilla enemies and even maybe some modded enemies, then things would probably get a lot more spicy, if you know what I mean, right? And that leads me into my second point, that the uh, Advent to Galactic Empire mod, it's a, it's a cool mod, it's a nice gimmick campaign, you know, showing some Star Wars love, right? Showing the uh, clone troopers some love because clone troopers are better than Jedi and Sith. Fucking come at me, bro. 1v1 me. Uh, and yeah, right? Definitely a great gaming campaign, but it really nerfs a lot of the enemies. Right? And it buffs others. Right? It nerfs some, buffs others. It nerfs, like, sectoids, vipers. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, gatekeepers, even. Uh, any, all the other ma, uh, a bunch of other, like, you know, lower level enemies, right? Sectoids are changed to scouts, they have no psionic abilities, 
Vipers are changed to snipers. They have no tongue pull ability and they don't have like poison grenades or anything. So they can't really mimic the Viper's poison spit. Uh, gatekeepers don't have any revival thingies. Don't have any fucking heavy psionic attacks. Although they kind of make up for it with... I don't really think we we haven't seen a lot of Dark Trooper Phase threes during Galaxy at War though, because that's what the Gatekeeper changes, which is kind of weird, though, right? Because it's like I wouldn't I wouldn't expect a Dark Trooper to replace a Gatekeeper, right? Even though Dark Trooper Phase threes are a thing in the Star Wars universe, I just didn't think a Gatekeeper would be really the uh, the unit of choice to replace them, maybe just have them as a standalone extra enemy. But then again, what would the gatekeeper be replaced by then? But still. Yeah, it's really hard to judge the dark troopers versus gatekeepers because we only fought like two. <laughs> Both of the times I just focus fired a damn thing and it never got a turn. So. Yeah, and then it buffs others the Fucking Mandalorians, man! <laughs> I had a, I had a right trip with those bastards, Tech Commandos and Pyrotechs. I know Tech Commandos replaced the Archons and the Pyrotechs replaced the Berserkers, but holy fucking shit! <laughs> Having Berserkers and Archons have those extra attacks, like the Archon have like a reliable, reliable. Uh, shotgun attack or a, like a shotgun close range attack being able to like Icarus jumps wherever it wants have the berserker have a flamethrower and a freaking rip jack and be able to Icarus jump wherever the hell it wants and that's definitely a big slap to the face like oh my god that and the fact that they have rip jacks right they have like arc blade rip jacks ionic rip jacks so they can stun I'm conscious. Oh my god, I had a field day with those motherfuckers. They're great mind control targets, but fuck. Oh, I thought there was the whole freaking herd of them during uh, Leviathan. It's oh Yeah, I don't want to fight those again. If I ever revisit the Galaxy of War playthrough, I'm not using Beta Strike. Holy mm. Mmm! Anyway. Uh. Yeah, it was def this was just really just a gimmick campaign, right? A gimmick fun campaign, and there's a lot more, you know, s more serious quote unquote campaigns, more high tension campaigns coming up. Which leads me to. Haha! Better Everything! So, I only played A Better Advent once before, and that was the original A Better Advent 1. Way before War of the Chosen was even announced or considered. Right? And I actually play, and the only reason why I played the original A Better Advent 1, because I wanted to play 1 and then hopefully play 2 at one point, but I never got to 2 because War of the Chosen came out before I could get to it. But the main reason why I played a better Advent 1 and back then is because I tried playing Long War 2 back then, but it ended up not working out because I kept on getting wiped after gate crasher, so I said screw it, I'm gonna change the campaign and I went with a better advent. Alright, I've never played a better advent 2, and I've this is my first time playing a better advent for War of the Chosen. So I thought might as well go all out and do better everything. I don't agree with everything the mod changes. Mainly being a better barracks and the shotgun and the cannon tweaks. Alright. They kind of break the flow a little bit of the base game. But I mean that's the point. It's an overhaul mod. Alright. It's supposed to change things up a little a lot. A little, a little, a little, and the changes do make sense, right? You know, you think looking around a giant heavy cannon would be hard. And, you know, shotguns reload one shell at a time, at least pump shotguns do, so, and most semi-auto ones do, unless it's make-fed, but... Yeah, you know, they make sense, but they're also low-key annoying. So, there you go. <laughs> Kinda, not what I'm used to, but it's a thing. I tried playing with a better campaign plus... But I had a lot of big, scary enemy mods on top of it. 
and the increased pod sizes, not to mention reinforcement pod sizes, kept on throwing these horrible, freaking scary enemies at me, and it just got too much that I couldn't handle it. <laughs> like, I'm not that great of a... Of, a, of an XCOM 2 player, right? It got a little bit too much for me, so it went with normal a better campaign. But it says here that he suggests plus two soldiers. I was only doing with one extra, right? So I only started with five instead of six, like it suggests. So I don't know. I'm kind of torn on that. I don't know if I should go back to a better campaign plus and use two soldiers. Or stick with one because it's more of a challenge it would probably make for a lot more interesting of an experience because I'm currently testing a better everything right now and the late game with just the normal pod sizes and the normal XCOM squad size and it's you know it's a curve storm right minus the occasional prime secto pod running around it's it's a fucking stomp fest right and let me tell you prime enemies are scary but I mean, I'm not here to talk about the entire campaign yet, you know, that'll be for after it's done, but, you know, I'm just on the fence about a better campaign plus. I don't know, if enough people say it in the comments, then I'll try a better campaign plus and do two soldiers. But I don't know, we'll see. Like I said, I'm really torn on what to do, alright? Like, I want to play a better campaign plus, because I know that'll be a more interesting experience, but at the same time... I'm a little scared <laughs> but I mean who knows we'll see we'll see we'll see all right and everything else you know better DLC adds a couple new units militia changes the Haven assault AI chosen AI tweaks better happen of course adds a bunch of new enemies and the prime enemies better barracks changes the classes a lot all these other things are here as well. I mean, I'm already using Icon Squad Selects and Mod Config. Better F1 and new promotion screen by default anyway, so that doesn't really change much. And of course, the Highlander is required for a lot of other mods that I'm using in the uh, in my pool as well. So that pretty much covers a bit of everything. I mean, you know, Daburk or D E R. BK, however he wishes to be called, but I'll just call him Deberk for now because it's easier. He's an excellent modder. He's taking a break from modding, based on what I could tell, but that doesn't mean his mods don't work. So, I'm definitely excited to be playing a better advent for War of the Chosen because it's been a while since I played a better advent in any kind of way. And then uh, there's also a... Uh, a little bit of off-the-books mods I'm using. By off-the-books, I mean they're not in the workshop. There's this guy. Uh, Cairo Technings, whatever the fuck. <laughs> uh, a lot of these mods used to be on the Steam Workshop. But some guy named Fireborn kind of like erased himself off of the Steam community altogether. But they're still here. Right? I don't know if he's the original Fireborn dude. I erased himself. Well, I don't want to get into that, right? I don't care what happened to him. I'm just happy that the mods are still here. It's a couple of extra steps to get it to get the mods from here, especially you know when it's updating all the time. It's if Wibbles has been getting plenty of updates recently, but it's worth it. All right, these mods are still really fucking cool. I would have used these mods for Raiders World, but back when that campaign was a thing, but they got removed off of the workshop, so I decided to move on with the campaign without them, but now that they're back, and now that my themed playthrough is done, which was Galaxy of War, I can now do these ones. Alright, Wibbles is fucking cool, he's an AI-controlled Cybern and a Chrysalid. He literally has a mind of its own. The Shivs, I mean, it's Shivs. Enemy within. Come on! Who doesn't like ships? <laughs> I fucking love ships. The only ships that are available are light ships and alloy ships. No hover ships, but that would probably be hard to code something like that. Because it's not like we have flying enemies like that. I mean, we have the Archon and the Gatekeeper, but they don't work the same as flying enemies did in Enemy Within. So makes sense and the missions pass adds a bunch of cool fun like action-packed very very nerve-wracking missions as well as with their own AI 
right? He has special AI in this mod. They're not just Haven Assault AI. They're smarter, more aggressive, and it's just fucking cool. All right, you got you. I cannot wait to see these guys in action on when I actually start playing it. And then, of course, here's the full mod list with those of you who want to see all my cosmetic mods, all my UI improvements, some maps. Uh, we have some new enemies like Armored Vipers, Advent Custodians. I might actually pick up the uh, Exalted Custodians, especially if it's going to be non Twitter Campaign Plus, but meh. Uh, we have Advent Field Training, which pretty much adds in. It's a sip, it's a sip rep based mod that pretty much adds in like Advent Training Officers and changes up. It might as well be an enemy mod, all right. And apparently, it was suggested by Christopher Odd some time ago. Or if you can get fucking mods, ideas and the mods, and I make full videos explaining my fucking mod concepts, and nobody bats an eye. <sighs> I'm a little fucking. Don't mind me, just being jealous. Um, yeah. I might as well be an Advent uh, enemy mod, and then of course all of my uh, game-changing mods. We're bringing back Rebellious Mox. I just like Mox, and I like Rebellious Mox. It may not be a Raiders World playthrough, but I mean, Rebellious Mox is pretty cool. So he's a prequel from Concealment and True Concealment. Oh, I missed a lot. Uh, I'm actually not using this mod anymore. I can't seem to get it to fucking work. Yeah, I can't seem to get that to work, and I don't really care about trying to get them to work, so there you go. And, uh, yeah. That is it. It's better everything, bunch of uh, Nexus mods, the main mod list, link to this will be in the description below, and the, uh, the uh, OSTs thingy, and a couple of the last, a couple of parting points here is, I am going to be streaming my better everything run, because I've been really looking forward to streaming XCOM 2. It's like these last couple of couple of days in my streams, it's been kind of quiet recently, not playing much. Because it's like, I just want to play XCOM 2 on stream to get shit going. I don't care if nobody really likes watching XCOM 2 on Twitch anymore. I'm still gonna fucking do it. Alright, I'm used to barely having five viewers in the, my chat at the same time, alright? I'm gonna play it, I'm gonna fucking have some fun with this. XCOM 2 is a beautiful game, and I can't wait to start streaming it live. It's probably going to be on Saturday, so the 11th, this coming Saturday, and it's probably going to be around 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Convert your own goddamn time zone, I'm not doing it for you. Uh, and of course, people who can't show up to the stream for whatever fucking reason, I don't care what the reason is, uh, the archive will be up. I will post archives up to YouTube for those of you that miss it and still want to watch it. So don't worry, I got you guys covered there. And uh, last thing is, of course, the character pool. My character pool is always open to viewers willing to join up with the campaign. You know, let me know the details of your character and below. Those of you new to XCOM 2 and don't know how the character pool works, pretty much first name, last name, nickname, armor, cosmetic, voice pack, country of origin, right, so wherever the hell you were born, if you don't want to disclose that, then I'll just make it America, I don't fucking care. And, uh, you know, armor color, weapon color, all that stuff, you know, it's, it may sound like a lot, but it's pretty simple. You know, I may take some characters on stream but I may save it for specific moments like you know I do a couple missions to get some character viewers in because it's like I just don't want to spend like the entire stream making characters because it is it may right you know it's a lot of things to go over people can be nitpicky there's a lot of details you have to uh, say and you know I may get some details wrong and people have to make me change them I and mean, it's a it's a lengthy process it's a simple but lengthy process and I don't want to do it for the first like 
three hours of my stream, all right? I want to get submissions. The whole point of streaming XCOM 2 is to play the game, not make characters. I'm still going to make them on stream. Don't worry, I'll still be willing to take them on stream, but just not all the time, right? I may go like, you know, let me wait to finish this mission or I'm going to do a couple missions and then I'll start taking characters, all right? No hard feelings, just I want to play the game. But anyway, uh... Those of you who wanna, uh, for those of you who don't really know and don't really want to convert their time zones, I'll leave a link to my Twitter account in the description below as well, where uh, I will tweet out a few minutes, you know, five to ten ish before I go live to let people people finish up whatever they're doing, get into the chat, you know, get ready to go. And then I'll start the stream and all that fun stuff. You know, a lot of streamers do it, so... Yeah, other than that, hopefully you guys are excited for this next playthrough. I know I fucking am. You know, I, I just really want to stream this game, alright? This is a game I've been waiting to stream for so long. But anyway, I'm done blabbling. Hopefully see you guys there. If not, again, archives are a thing, you know. That's why I do it. And, uh, yeah. See you guys next time, and I'm out.